What's up y'all, random video today, looking at some viewer comments. And the first one is from Garrett and it says, please review Brian Kelly's wave pack. Yeah, they call me Beach Campbell. The next comment was on my Alan Jackson video, the underappreciated genius of Alan Jackson. And thank you so much for all the views that that video is getting by a guy named Levi Clay. He says, Grady, this is excellent work. I can't believe I missed it. Alan will always be the king. From a guitar player's perspective, the sheer amount of great players he has worked with is astonishing. I transcribed and played almost 100 Brent Mason solos on my channel and going. And actually a lot of people reached out, a lot of guitar players, a lot of guitar nerds, if I'm being honest, and I say that with love, reached out and mentioned Brent Mason to me just because he has come up with some of the most iconic guitar riffs like that. <laughs> at the start of Chattahoochee, that's Brent Mason. And he's played on Shania Twain album. Someone else said he's gonna be in a Shania Twain documentary. And I went to Levi's channel and sure enough, he has all these Brent Mason little solos. That's how many I've done, 75 Brent Mason solos over 75 days into one long video. And man, this comment just humbled me because in every way, this guy knows more about guitar and music than I do. And I just feel really gratified that people that are this talented are listening to me who's my talent is really just synthesizing what other people have said and people that are more talented than me. And you know, having this channel has just made me realize how much I don't know and how much about the history of country music I don't know. But I'm curious and I'm really thankful that people like Levi are out there and Brent Mason is a badass. By the way, I don't think I mentioned it, but this is a shirt from Rock and Roll Denim who reached out to me after I mentioned that I liked Tristan Merez's shirts in my review of his last couple songs. And I guess they, they work with him often and they were like, Grady, we'll send you some shirts. So this is like an Aztec double like pearl snap print shirt from them. And it was just really kind of them. This isn't sponsored or anything. Uh, the next video came from my video about Canadian country music. And I just chose one because there was like a million comments that said this, but a Canadian country song list isn't complete without Stronger Beer by Tim Hicks. That was Cole Johnston that said that. I get afraid singing this song in America. I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm so glad y'all mentioned this song because I, I had not heard of it. If you are an American like me that has never heard the song Stronger Beer and you kind of think it would be fun to get roasted by a Canadian about how Americans aren't all that they think they are. In this kind of bar song that you just imagine a bunch of Canadians singing drunk in a bar at 2 a.m., you gotta go listen to this. It's a strangely good time. And what makes it fun is that it's like only kind of a brag. You got a stronger army down there, a man up here. We got stronger beer. And in general, I could respond to all of the Canadian comments from people that are like, you forgot Jess Moskaluk, you forgot, uh, you know, Dallas Smith or whatever. And I'm like, guys, it was a beginner's guide for this channel that's like 90 something percent American that don't know any of these artists. So we were already getting thrown into the deep end and I understand that there are a lot of great artists around the world, but you know, hopefully, I always say, I can just take people to the rabbit hole. We, I can't go down every rabbit hole. Alex Byers says, here, friendly challenge, do one verse in Walmart of your favorite singer out loud, Facebook or TikTok, if you think you're better than them. I don't think I'm better than anyone, you know? I just am trying to react to things in an honest way. I think to pay attention to music is to love music. Sure, I guess I pay attention. Don't you think maybe they are the same thing? Love and attention? Man, people always say this. People always say, why don't you do it? You think you're better than them? I'm like, no, I don't think I'm better than anyone. And what's funny is people always feel most passionately like this about the biggest stars. Like if you say, I didn't like a Luke Bryan song, they're like, how dare you? People get like very protective. Look, scroll back on my channel. You can find me singing a song about being a music critic years ago. I spend my days angry at guys who make money with the same stupid hats and the same bad songs. And spoiler alert, I know it's not that good. This one comes from Melissa. She says, I hope Morgan gets his antics together. He has potential to stay in country and become one of the greats. I hope he makes a real change and he can re-enter the scene and give this album its proper dues. So she's talking about Morgan Wallen. I haven't mentioned him since my live stream. Um, his album Dangerous ended up being number one in all genres for 10 straight weeks, which a country album really hasn't done. He did post an apology video and said he's gonna take some time away. He then wrote a letter that he posted on his Instagram yesterday. You can go there and read it. I think it's a really good sentiment that's basically like, I'm continuing to take some time away. I'm not gonna be touring this summer. 
you know, whether that was a decision he made or not, we don't know, but he's not going to be touring this summer and he's taking some more time for himself. And uh, he says, I'm still proud of who I am. He's like, I've made mistakes, but I'm still proud of who I am. And, you know, there are going to be some people that take umbrage with that line, but I was really happy to see it because I don't think anyone changes in a lasting way from a negative place. I don't think anyone really reflects without having kind of some love of, of self. And I really relate to that idea a lot. You know, I've not had alcohol for like six months. I'm wary of saying I'm never gonna have alcohol again, but that's kind of my current plan. And I've just met a lot of people that are sort of making changes in their lives and at various meetings and stuff. And shame just cripples people and it makes them worse. It doesn't make them better ever. And so that line I feel like really jumped out at me. But I know people get fired up on the subject. I'm not trying to dive into that on this beautiful spring Thursday. And so um, look, if I were a YouTuber that liked controversial content, I mean, I could be really popular, but I don't. For men nowadays, mistakes are not allowed. There's no planks in the eyes of the strangely perfect crowd. Okay, so this one came from Wise Guy 436 It's in response to my 10 favorite country songs ever video, which elicits more fury than any video I have. Uh, and it's constantly getting a comment like this. Dude, take off your skinny jeans and let your sad little balls breathe. Have not listened to anything prior to 1990 with the exception of Dolly and Willie, which you invalidated your argument with two of my songs. You put these people above people like Patsy Cline, Hank Williams, Merle Haggard, Glenn Campbell, Extension, you're an idiot. You gotta love no apostrophe in your when someone is saying you're an idiot, perfect. But I pulled this comment just because I love that, that line about skinny jeans at the beginning. What I've learned being a YouTuber over the last few years is that I am a Rorschach test. There are going to be people that have never seen me before and see how I part my hair and see that I wear skinny jeans and they immediately think you're the type of person that, insert blank here, that, oh, you look down on people that, that listen to old school country. You live in the city and you hate farmers or something. And they project that sort of resentment onto you. Meanwhile, there's going to be people that are maybe like, uh, this happened on the Morgan Wallen video, um, that, that see me and they're like, oh, you're a white guy. And it's like, wow, you didn't have any of this energy for forgiveness about the Dixie Chicks. And they're saying you're just part of a system that, that creates injustice. And that is them taking a presumption and putting it on me, projecting it onto me. And it happens from both sides so hard. And, and by the way, I'm one of the few people on this earth that paid my own money to own the C-SPAN congressional hearing footage of the Dixie Chicks hearing when John McCain was investigating the big radio conglomerates. Suppose, Mr. Dickey, that uh, I or any member of the United States Senate uh, did said or did something that y your program managers found incredibly offensive. Would you then make a decision that our name, that that my name, not be mentioned on your news programs because it was such an, a hue and cry? No, sir, we wouldn't. That's a. That's you wouldn't a, do that because I did have that energy, and I thought absolutely they shouldn't be taken off the radio, and so. It's frustrating sometimes to feel so misunderstood and to feel kind of put in a box, but more and more I've recognized that, A, I do care what people think about me. That just is what it is. I shouldn't sit here and just be like, I have to be tougher, I don't care what you say. I do care what you say. I want to be aware of what people think, but at the same time I've learned people project a lot onto you. And because I live in this kind of like academic little university town and the way that I talk and I dress, so many people just see me and immediately know me to be someone that doesn't like country folk. And they're just wrong. Like you'll get comments like this one from Dixie Charm that's like, for folks from the country who are pretty much listening to country music and paying for all this, by the way, we want to hear songs about how we live and relate. And I don't think I'm ever going to be able to shake that off altogether, but I do think it's such a misunderstanding of me because if people only knew Knew how much I really long for that experience, how much I really wish I hadn't become a New York media guy, how much I really regret a lot of my college education and wish to be more down to earth and with the people. And I have changed a lot in the last few years. I don't speak the same way or with the same disdain or with the same haughty attitude that I used to. And 
I, I get really frustrated when my, my skinny jeans get in the way of that because on some deep level, I want to be understood, um, but I'm also learning to accept more and more. I'm a Rorschach test. You can approach me and see me in completely different ways that are completely opposing, but for the most part, I got a great group of people that do get me, and I'm, I'm learning to not overthink it so much. And then I wanna include two comments as my last comment. The first one's from Yisroel, Yisroel, that says, I think nowadays country is better in a way. Totally agree. But then the kind of corollary to that, one from Kevin that says, stop calling it country music. Real country music died in the early 90s. Now it's just pop music with Southern accents. And I get, you know, a bunch of those every day. And increasingly those types of comments kind of frustrate me because I feel like they're not having a clear eyed view of what's happening in music right now. I feel like there are so many mainstream artists that seem to be making more of a trend toward goodness. Like Thomas Rhett, I'm not saying he has become Cody Jinx, but that song Growing Up that I covered last time that I, I misspoke, it is not a mandolin in it, it is an instrument called a bazooki. It's beautiful. His new song Country Again, yeah, maybe a little bit checklisty, but it is such a musical step forward and into kind of lyrics of substance than stuff like Craving You that he was putting out. And you could say the same thing about Luke Bryan's last album or even this Brian Kelly album. And there's just been a bunch of music in the mainstream that has had really great things to reflect upon. Like Carrie Underwood just turned in her countryest project ever. That Ian Munsick record that I just talked about is kind of a fascinating fusion of country traditions with modern sort of flourishes. And yeah, there's a bunch of stuff that I don't love. You can watch my worst of 2020 video if you want to know all the stuff that's bad, but I just have been covering this stuff for like eight years now. I was a journalist and then I had a column and now I have this YouTube channel and overall country music is getting a lot countryer and a lot prouder of being countryer than it was. And so I kind of feel like it is important to affirm what you want to happen. And in the same way, I think it's important not to tear down a desirable outcome. Like when you're training your dog and for the first time it, you know, goes outside to pee instead of peeing on the kitchen floor, you say good boy and shake its head and give it a treat. Or if you are in some kind of ongoing argument with your spouse and saying, hey, I would really appreciate it if you would put your toothbrush back in the medicine cabinet. When they adjust their behavior, you better affirm that and say, hey, thank you for doing that. Like, I know it's stupid, but that meant a lot to me because that's how you reinforce kind of the world that you want. And I try to take that attitude as a music listener. If I'm gonna go there and I'm gonna say, I don't want everything to be snap tracks with rap verses and stupid lyrics about nothing, then when Thomas Rhett makes something a lot more country, when Brian Kelly makes something a lot more country, when I feel like there's more substance in the lyrics, yeah, I'm gonna praise it. And I don't wanna have the attitude of just being like, nope, all music sucks. It doesn't, it just doesn't. And that's been a challenging place for me to grow to because I got popular being harsh and I kind of am worried if I don't keep doing that, I'm gonna lose my audience, but I gotta follow what I feel in here. And what I feel in here is that it's not getting worse and it's not dead. And maybe part of that is just that I'm learning to ignore like award shows and radio so much more and just kind of be like, no, we have it all at our fingertips. I don't have to engage in this old system that often is promoting trash. So anyway, there's just my casual random video viewer comments. That was kind of fun. It was kind of simple. I'm gonna do a real light edit on this. I hope you like it and let me know your thoughts on all this stuff. Okay, if you've never been here before, subscribe. If you hate it here, just go away. You don't have to subscribe. And otherwise, I'll see you soon. Eric Church, coming up next, probably. Bye.